goes. Uh, this is for another uh, back burner project I've meant to do for a while. In fact, I'd almost forgotten about it, but I wanted to make a, a sort of vice fixture plate, tooling plate. Uh, doesn't have to be particularly large, and it's also a question of what I've got. Well, I got this piece of uh, six by eight half inch. It's not very clean. I don't know what that is on the corner. The other side's not very good at all. So I thought I'd clean it up. Um, I'm going to take the mill across that side, which is the best of the three, flip it and do the other side, and then set up with uh, indicator to do a side, in other words flip it 90, do a third edge, and then a fourth one just to tidy it up and then hopefully use, if I can find them, these uh, I did a video on these quite a long time ago these uh, low profile edge clamps and these are nominally 3 8 so I should be able to hold the I should be able to hold the sides of the plate on the uh, table and then use a fly cutter to face it off, taking off a minimum, absolute minimum, just to get a reasonable face on it. And then set it up on uh, some spacers and, or mark up and drill a whole set of holes and tap them, <laughs> which is going to be a lengthy job. Uh, not having a CNC facility, which of course would be the ideal. So that's all it is. Just something which now and again I wish I had uh, for fixing awkward pieces. Uh, anyway, I'm going to do this in uh, two parts because uh, one thing I need for the uh, for doing the holes is um, a spiral flute tap because I want to power tap, and I don't really want to risk doing it with a standard tap. I'm going to go uh, three eight sixteen for the main hole series. So because I've got to wait to get this damn tap, I don't know why it's going to take so long. I've got one on order. But uh, seemingly it's going to be a while before it gets here. So in the meantime, uh, as a filler, I should be doing one other small project, which is, and this won't tell you much at all, as <laughs> a piece of corroded scrappy two by two by quarter angle, it's all scrap box, a uh, piece of three quarter, three sixteen, and this is three quarter by half, and I'm going to make out of those bits uh, a table stop, I'll call it that, because it's going to be a vice stop but attached to uh, a T-nut. Uh, I've made two vice stops, one for each of my main vices, and more than one person has suggested the T-slot approach, which I've had in mind for ages actually, but I think the time's come to make something, and it's going to be very functional. Anyway, we'll come to that in another video. So, here is the machining part of the aluminum plate, just getting it all trued up and uh, nicely finished. And then at some point we'll do a part two when I get to uh, drilling, tapping and such like. All right. This of course is where a properly controllable power feed would be extremely handy. But as yet, I haven't got it. <laughs> I'm going to try 10 thou.
that was probably about, I'm uh, guessing, about four inches a minute. I so it's only a tenth hour cut. It looks as though I've got to take one more pass to clean up this end. Then we'll uh, flip it over, do the other side, keep going, get all the sides cleaned up. You may have noticed before the parallels I've got either side at the bottom. A bit of extra clamping rigidity. I was going to indicate the uh, side of this to get my top, but uh, it's a bit tricky to uh, indicate for that on the z-axis. A bit tedious anyway. So I've got my large square. I've got a light behind which gives me the uh, visual gap. In fact there was only a very small discrepancy and I'm, I've got the better side down. This side is bad. So that's worked out pretty good and uh, I'm not making this to ultra accuracy, I just want it to be good. So we'll go ahead at some point and uh, get that edge taken off and then carry on from there. Right, we're set up on the low profile clamps, 3 Gen. Uh, I've taken one pass with a fly cutter. It's fairly slow, so there's not really a lot of point in trying to video all of that. This is the bottom side, you might be able to see on here, and I've put a lot of lights off because this is so reflective. Um, this side of the plate is very beaten up. It's even got a dent here from an air, air gun pellet, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <coughs> so I've got to set this up to do the second pass here. Uh, I'm only taking a skim of about three thou and I'll probably only take about the same on the other side. Anyway, I'll set this up um, for the next cut and then we'll show a bit of that. Well, I've got some light on this but again there may still be a lot of reflection. Uh, the camera's a slightly low angle from a distance, a bit zoomed in. We'll see how it works out. I've again put the uh, close lighting off because the the glare is pretty crazy. That's come out quite well. Uh, that local blemish, which as I said I think was, was an air gun pellet. <laughs> um, that's going to be the underside anyway. I don't feel too bad. It's not the best of fly cutters actually. I don't think it runs all that true, so I have to make sure I finish my cut on the uh, back side. But uh, it's not too bad. So we'll uh, turn over and do the other side. Alright, that's the end of the second pass on the second side. Feels quite nice.
so uh, we're going to take this out and uh, deburr the edges put a slight file chamfer on probably to clean up then mark out for uh, the hole pattern uh, these I may have mentioned I can't remember these T slots are on two and a half inch centers so we'll probably work on two and a half uh, well one and a quarter and that'll give for five I don't know about five by seven five by eight depends because this has got to be set up on parallels and clamped for the uh, drilling and tapping which is going to take a while <laughs> well we've only got to release one set of clamps at one end but in fact by the time I've eased both ends uh, it'll come out easily and these ends are already loose and not under tension here we are I mean this is so reflective it's ridiculous <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's picking up shop lights all over the place but uh, yeah I'm pleased with that that feels nice so we've got to clean up and mark up. Well the glare on here is terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely awful. I can't do much about it really. I could put some uh, dye on here. This marking up is purely for reference. Just to plan my whole pattern. Uh, because eventually it'll be done with the DRO so as I mentioned earlier I think T-slots are on two and a half inch centers so I'm going to have five rows inch and a quarter inch and a quarter inch. right so I'm going to work out what I can get in this way round for the main the main holes, so we've got T-slot holes there, these will be general purpose and we'll probably put those on the halfways, get diagonals and in the end probably put in a few extra uh, probably some quarter inch holes just to use for pegs or something like that, so just going to carry on marking up here well, to get the glare off, this is damn near impossible. <laughs> so, um, all I've done is work it on a, what is in fact an inch and a quarter square matrix. And I've marked up my diagonals. Now, one of the problems is uh, mounting it to the table. Ideally, I'd like to use this spare area each side that ain't going to work because the table's not uh, deep enough this way and if I turn it 90 degrees I haven't got enough wide travel uh, these ends don't really matter too much unless I do something retrospectively on them so as I say we've got 44 holes and I'll have to clamp each end here on parallels get them well jacked up what I do with those ends later I don't know may well leave them alone but the other thing I'm thinking of is possibly uh, putting in some either some quarter twenty holes because these are all going to be uh, 3 8 16 so I might work in some quarter twenties here and there and some half inch plane holes just to take pegs I don't know I have to decide on that but the idea is now having worked that out as it is for the main layout oh we got the glare back again haven't we <laughs> um, now using this basic sort of map uh, is to draw up a coordinate set because I haven't got a smart DRO it's just the basic 
So I'll work out a coordinate set uh, for all these points and then it'll be a case to just uh, get going on the DRO eventually. Right, well this is where we left it. Uh, haven't got it all marked up just for the basic pattern. And then, and thanks are due to Randy Richard who helped me in no small way to get sorted out with my CAD. So I've got, this was, this was, oops, this was the first go uh, to get me to this whole pattern with dimensions. And then I thought, oh, I haven't done my diagonals, or the infill, shall we say. So I had another go, which took me a while because I'm trying to get used to the software. So we've now got the main hole pattern done, which, uh, which gets me to this oh, pieces of paper. So that's what I should be using and of course what I'm needing for my uh, simple little DRO is, is a, a coordinate set and this basically gives me the info I need so that I can go well three three times round first of all drill all the holes come back round and uh, chamfer and then hopefully when I get the uh, spiral flute tap uh, power tap the whole lot uh, so that's it for now guys, thanks for watching, hope to be back soon.